everyone, it's John Franchella here again with a new 15 minute tips about camera properties and some of these really important settings that mimic real life cameras in Cinema 4D. So in the last tip video, I talked about animating cameras and that could be really powerful and that was just with the default camera. And in addition to camera motion, some of the best ways to get realistic looking cameras in three dimensional programs is keep in mind real camera properties and really pay attention to things like the focal length, our f-stop, as well as setting up the depth of field in our render settings and motion blur, because those are all things that are gonna happen in real life when you're using real cameras and how you're gonna get really cinematic, high quality looking images using a 3D program that has all this built-in information to mimic real life cameras. For any of this to make sense, it does help to have an idea of how actual cameras work. In a Cinema 4D, if I just make a new camera and it defaults to focal length 36 millimeter and physical f-stop 8. And what those mean in a quick description, what makes cameras powerful is because you can change those lenses and it's going to change how your image looks. So our eyeballs only have one lens and we're not seeing things differently, but if you have cameras, you can have lots of different lenses and that's going to change how the world looks. A couple settings in Cinema 4D that we have besides 36 are things like super wide angle all the way down to telephoto. And to talk through that, I have an example of those types of lenses and some photos that I've taken in good old Chicago of different lenses on an actual camera. So if we have something like a wide angle is going to be on that lower end and they're around like 15 to 35 and what that's going to do is distort the world and make everything seem much bigger and bend the world and fit in more than you would actually see. So if we take a look at these two photos we can see that the world is getting kind of bent. Same thing with this one with the road even though it's flat and head on because it's warping and bending the way that light and the image is coming in. And if we take a look just googling wide angle lens this is what a lot of the photos look like if you're seeing a lot of the world and especially ones like this it's really bending if you think of like high angle sports stadiums or when they have the blimp how they're fitting in that whole image is a very wide angle or fisheye lens the other end of the spectrum if we look in cinema 40 is telephoto and what those are typically at is somewhere around 120 to 300 millimeters at a lens like this and what those are do is compressing the space and getting a tighter amount of information than you would. So the complete other end of the spectrum than a wide angle lens. So some examples that I've taken are things like this where you're just seeing a little bit and the background seems really close even though it's very far away and same thing here. And depending on the aperture limitations or what the aperture is set to, you get varying amount of out of focus elements. So to relate that to our Cinema 4D stuff, which is what we're all here for, if I make a new camera in Cinema 4D and hop into my camera view up here in this box, if I just do a quick shift R, our scene doesn't change at all and we're seeing exactly what we did before. And I have just a quick scene of a floor and a two Motex items and a couple of lights and just enough to be able to talk through this. So on this camera, if I kind of just move around and look at these head on and fix my rotation a bit and do another quick render. It looks just like it would if we hadn't dropped in a camera yet. We're seeing everything accurately without any distortion based on the lens because we're at a default 36 millimeter lens, which is not gonna distort or change how we're seeing things. Now, if I look in four views and I change this to something like a super wide angle, you can see that the camera hasn't moved, but it looks like we're further away. And if we get really close to one of these text pieces, you can see that it's really distorting this and making it seem much bigger than it is. So again, I'll do another quick render and you can see that it looks much bigger and this can be very useful for motion graphics. And this is why as an example on a different tutorial when I was talking about logo animation, I did use an 18 millimeter lens to get this big distortion look because that's really great for big 3D motion graphics. And conversely, if I back that view up to where we were in the center and change the same camera to the highest default setting of super telephoto, you can see all of a sudden it looks like we're punched in just on this little M. But again, the camera hasn't moved. It just looks like it has this giant lens. So if I back up and kind of shift this into place where I can see my subjects, Same objects, they're not any closer, but if I do a quick render, we can see compared from this to this, these objects look like they're right on top of each other and the space much more compressed, even though 
in physical space, they aren't any closer. And this is really important to consider and can give you a lot of different results, especially with motion graphics if you're thinking of using wide angle cameras and getting this really big looking text and scenes. And if we look at some examples again quick, where you often see telephoto lenses used is things like sports photos where they're actually down the field and they're just on one person, but it looks like they're right up next to them and the background is so out of focus because the plane of focus is so tight and the space is being compressed so much. So I'll just reset this to, I'll stick with our 15 millimeter and just get this back into place. So our focal length or our lens that we have on is gonna change what the image looks like. The other thing that's really important in lenses is our f-stop and you can see on these as an example this is a variable lens from 120 to 300 it has a range of f-stop from 1 to 2.8 what that means is the lower the number the less amount of light that's going to be let into the camera lens and the tighter plane of focus that you're going to get and more objects in the foreground and background out of focus which is great and to relate that to our virtual camera if we go to physical you can see that we have an f-stop and what this relates to is in our render settings if we turn on depth of field and then change this to a lower number we'll have a tighter plane of focus and objects outside of our focus object which we can send a second will be more out of focus so i'll do a quick shift render and you can see it doesn't look that extreme but what's convenient is you can go well beyond what you would get with the default lens which is great about cinema 4d because when 3d programs you can go beyond the lowest f-stop so if we put this to something like 0.125 enter and do a quick render you can see that now the plane of focus is much tighter and we're getting a bit of noise and that's just because of our settings for our physical renderer i have it set to low so if you did set this to high for a final render this is one of the things that really comes across with the quality of the renderer again i'll just do another quick render you can see that the quality is a lot higher and if we go back and forth it takes care of the noise and does take quite a bit longer to render but you'll get more realistic results now the problem here is I might actually want the word camera to be in focus or I want to be able to control that distance. So in a real camera, you would punch in and get your focus, but we don't have to do that because we're working with computers and they can do that for us. What I want to do is in the camera under object, there's focus object under focus distance. And I could just type this in or just go up and down and you can see that it's moving what would be in focus and we're getting that movement here or we can set a focus object and say just grab one of these texts, bring it in there and it's going to set that exactly to that object. So if I do another shift R, we can see that the text is mostly in focus, but we're actually getting a little problem here because our f-stop is so low that it's thinner than even this text. So we can see that it's overlapping it a bit. So if I actually clear out that image and now that I have it set as an example, move this a little further back, do another render. Now we can see that this text is exactly in focus. So it's a good little thing to remember if you're setting the focus object with a really low f-stop. It might be thinner than your actual object. Now if we make this f-stop even lower, something even a little further like 0 0.10 and render again, you can see between the two that we're getting a tighter plane of focus and this is more out of focus. Now, if we wanted the back to be in focus, we could same thing, just put that text. But what's cool about this focus object is this could be anything, it could be a moving object and a great way to control it is if we set a null, create object null and have that in our scene and we could just call this focus null. Under the focus object, we can use that so I have something linked to my point of focus. If I move this, that's gonna move with it. And what I could do is if I animate that position, so I'll just throw a keyframe on here and then at the end, move that null to our second text and put a new keyframe. If I render this out as a quick little movie, and then scrub through this, you can see that the focus is shifting from the foreground text to the background text to correspond with it's shifting on that null in our scene. So this can be incredibly useful for controlling where your focus is, especially if you have a really tight plane of focus and using depth of field can get really cinematic results. Now it is one of the things that's a pretty big render hit. So it's good to pick and choose when you're gonna use this. Changing our lens isn't gonna really change render time, but turning on depth of field with our f-stop really is going to impact it, but it can be extremely powerful to recreate cinematic looks.
Now, the last thing I want to talk about is creating motion blur and what happens when we turn on this movie camera checkbox. So if a camera or objects were moving in real life at 30 frames per second, we would get motion blur from the objects or from the cameras moving quicker than the camera can record them unless we had a really high shutter speed. Now, in film, what's happening is if we turn on our movie camera, it's going to give us our shutter angle and that's what will impact how much motion blur you would actually have with a film camera. So if I go to my render settings and turn on motion blur and I'll just turn off depth of field because we're not going to use that right now and say that our camera is flying extremely quickly over one of the text to this one I'll put a keyframe at frame zero and then at frame like six move it way ahead and put another keyframe and then if we go to any of those frames where it's moving, if I do a quick shift R with motion blur turned on, you can see that the object is blurring as the camera passes it. And this is good. We would want this because realistically that's what would be happening. And otherwise it would look really choppy if you have camera movement or objects moving if you don't have this. And how this would be happening in a real movie camera is this shutter angle. So 180 is default and how most cameras would be and give us accurate blur. If I drop that all the way down to a 10 and then do another render on the same frame, we're getting completely different motion blur based on changing our shutter angle and remembering that that's what a real camera would be doing. Now, there's a lot more to cameras. You can really go really far and change all sorts of other settings like lens distortion, vignetting, chromatic aberration, as well as change the sampling of how those are being rendered in our render settings by turning up motion blur samples, which will equate to more render time, but higher quality, turn up our sampler. But keeping in mind, our focal length on the camera, the f-stop, as well as making a movie camera if it's moving and adjusting our shutter angle if we want for motion blur are the big three to me that really can, from a lens perspective, create realistic cinematic looking pictures in addition to what we talked about in the last video with camera animation. Now to keep going with cameras in the next video, I do want to talk about these couple of default rigs for cameras, which can be really fun, such as this camera crane demo that I set up. So check out that one because these can be a lot of fun to just drop in and animate around. So I hope you learned a lot about cameras, lenses, depth of field, and how all this is working in Cinema 40. Thanks for watching. And as always, don't forget to subscribe Subscribe on YouTube and Vimeo slash Sean Fangella. Check out the Facebook page, facebook.com slash Vital for updates on videos and other stuff. And thanks for watching. I'll see you at the next video and we'll keep talking about cameras and animation and all sorts of cool stuff you can do with these things.